In need of a Windows 10 key for your new PC build? Well, you're in luck. Today's sponsor is CDK Deals, and they have a deal for you. CDK Deals is a site that offers excellent deals on games and software. And of course, they offer Windows 10 Pro OEM keys at a ridiculously good price. Just find the best deal and go ahead and pop in my promo code, GOG20, to apply an additional 20% off. You can check out securely via credit card or PayPal, and once done, you will go ahead and get direct access to your key via the website as well as in your email. Once you have your key, all you have to do is type in activate in your search bar, go ahead and pop the key in, and poof, you're up and running. To take advantage of this excellent offer, all you have to do is click the link in the description and pin comment down below. Make sure to apply GOG20 to get that additional 20% off. Hello everyone and welcome to The Good Old Gamer, the channel where we cut through the marketing BS, take a look at new and old gaming technologies to figure out what makes the most sense for you. All right, so with the GPU market being in such disarray to where most of you guys fit into two camps, either you're sitting there smashing the refresh button over and over again, or you're like me and you're basically just saying, I'm gonna keep what I have and maybe next generation I'll take a look at this or towards the end of this generation, maybe then I'll start paying attention to graphics cards. Now, if you are in that category of somebody actively looking for a new high-end graphics card like an RTX 3080 or 6800 XT or beyond, maybe those aren't the gra right graphics cards for you. Uh, we're gonna be talking about landing proper expectations. Like maybe those graphics cards are too much for what you need. And if you're somebody like me who's just gonna stick with what they have, there are smart cuts out there that you can make to your games that will give you an enhanced gaming experience with what you currently have. So that's what I wanna to talk to you guys about here today. But before we get into it, if you guys like content like this, please smash that like button. This lets YouTube know that you guys enjoy this type of content. This tells YouTube that they should promote this type of content because they're really actively trying to suppress smaller creators at this point in time. It's becoming more and more difficult to go ahead and get the attention out there on smaller videos. So I really thank you all for your support for doing that. Liking, sharing, and commenting in the comment section below are the best ways that you can help out. And I thank you all for your support. So the three things that we're gonna be taking a look at today are resolution, frame rate, target frame rate, and quality settings. Now, like I said, this is gonna differ between each and every single one of you. You're gonna differ from my opinion, you're gonna differ from the next viewer's opinion. But if you go ahead and understand what it is that you personally like, what's best for you, ultra quality settings, for example, is not the best visual quality settings for me. The highest graphical fidelity graphic settings for me actually makes the games look worse. And then in conjunction, not only will it, will it make the game look worse, it hits frame rate, so it actually makes it run worse. So for me, running ultra and having all of the settings maxed out or even turned on, certain settings for me just need to be disabled for it to look its best. And that nets me more performance, which means I can get away with a lower end GPU. And you might be in the same boat as well. Now, if you're just one of those people that go, hey, I just want the highest resolution with the highest settings and you don't really look into it, you don't tweak things, you don't know what it is that you really want or what looks best to you, this video is really designed for you. So the first thing I wanna target is resolution. Resolution is one of those very subjective things that's gonna be very different between each individual. Now you guys know that I'm a big fan of the LG OLEDs out there. If you haven't seen my video, you can check it out here, or here, one of the sides. Uh, check out that video, I go in depth when I got my LG OLED transformative experience. Now to me, on the LG OLED, the difference between 1080p and 4K is noticeable, but it's not substantial. Meaning that on that display, for me, I can run my games at 1080p native. Now, I do have the RTX 2060, which I did a video, another video, going over DLSS 4K. Now, that runs very well on that display, and that does bump up the image quality a little bit. So, to me, 1080p native resolution or DLSS 4K is the way to go on the LG OLED. Once again, that's just for me. Everybody's going to differ on this opinion. Now, why 1080p, why not 1440p? Okay, so take a look here. I'm gonna have up a little graphic here. So this is just one pixel, just one square pixel. We're just gonna do this one pixel at a time. Okay, so on a 1080p display, let's say this is you know the one pixel. Now, when you go to 4K, 
what happens is you just add the three pixels around the side and then poof, there you go. Now you have 4K image. So it's four pixels that were one beforehand, but it scales perfectly. Still looks like one pixel, it just looks bigger. Now on a 4K display, this one pixel will take up the exact same size and same area as it does on a 1080p display, meaning you get clean scaling the whole way. So to me, 1080p and 4K, those are the two resolutions you run on a 4K display. Just like a 1440p display, the problem is, is if you do one quarter of the resolution there, you're running 720p. And that does make a big difference, mostly in terms of aliasing and overall clarity, that will hurt your image quality. Now, resolution, higher resolutions really come into play when you use a lot of post-processing effects on modern games. Now, me personally, and this is something we'll talk about when we get to visual settings or quality settings, I don't like this stuff. To me, most post-processing actually degrades image quality. It makes it blurrier, things like you can just think of depth of field. What does that do? That makes the image blurrier. Now, some people are going to like it because it looks more cinematic. To me, you're just degrading image quality for no reason at a performance hit. So to me, just turning that crap off makes a whole lot of sense. And we'll go over that here in a little bit. But how this ties into resolution is the higher your base resolution, the better off those effects are going to look. So if you are one of those people that love all the graphical effects, uh, like the guys over at Digital Foundry, they love all of them, even like motion blur, which makes no sense to me at all. But since they love all those graphical effects, typically you're going to want the higher internal resolution. So if you are one of those people, 4K might make more sense to you. Now, if you're more like me and you don't like all of those post-processing effects that hurt your performance at reducing image quality. It's not like VRS, which gives you more performance at a slight quality hit. These actually lower performance and make your image quality worse. Uh, then you can probably get away with a lower resolution as the visual difference between 4K and 1080p becomes much, much lower as it's not trying to take those pixels and do other things with them. Now, if you do have a 1440p display like a desktop monitor, say a 27 or a 32 inch, you're probably stuck there. But luckily in this market, 1440p isn't that difficult to run. Uh, in the system right here, I do have an RX 580. I ran games a few years ago and that was still able to run 1440p at medium to high settings. Now with modern games, maybe that's gonna be like medium and low, but this is a very old graphics card that's still technically capable of doing 1440p. Something like an RTX 2060 or the new RTX uh, 3060 that's coming out or 3060 Ti, the new Navi 22 GPUs, if and when they're ever available. But even something like the 5600 XT or 5700, those are perfectly capable at 1440p gaming. So you don't need a super high-end graphics card, but you're still looking at the four to like, $600 range for 1440p. So you're still paying a premium over people that can get away with 1080p. But realistically, I can't see you scaling that down to 720p and then upsampling. That I think is just too low. But 1080p on a 4K display, to me, at least on the LG OLED with its great AI upscaling, it's barely noticeable. All right, so the next thing that you have to figure out is what frame rate targets make the most sense for you. Now, once again, this is gonna differ between individuals. It's also gonna differ on what type of games that you play. Me, I typically play single player games or local uh, co-op games. So for me, most of the games that I play are gonna be kind of like action oriented. So like action RPGs, kind of like the Witcher games is a good example, or uh, first person shooters like Doom, Doom Eternal, those type of games. And that's kind of the range that I usually stick with at this point in time. So for me personally, I'm just gonna get this right out there, 30 FPS is unacceptable for any of these games. Um, the reason for that is 30 FPS introduces an input delay that is just simply too high. So even in a game like The Witcher 3, having decent responsiveness on your controls, it's not super critical, it's not a twitch shooter, but you still need to be able to turn to an enemy, be able to pit, pick the right you know, magic spell that you wanna hit them with and actually hit the correct enemy. You don't want that input delay making it so you're hitting the wrong enemy because that can throw off the battle. So to me, 60 FPS is the standard for this type of gameplay. Most third person action games, 60 FPS in my eyes is perfectly fine. Now for games like Doom, Doom 2016 for example, I tested out extensively at 60 FPS and 120 FPS. And even at 60 FPS, the input delay was simply too high. 
Um, this was using controller or keyboard and mouse. However, by moving up to 120 FPS, that game smoothed out perfectly and going beyond 120 FPS made no sense to me at all because I couldn't feel it getting any better. So that jump from 60 to 120 in that super fast Twitch type shooter made a lot of sense. And now that doesn't mean all first person shooters need to run at 120 FPS for me. For example, Call of Duty feels about right at about 90. So I can get away with about 90 at on that game series because their input delay is very, very low just from the jump. Even at 60, it's pretty playable. It's much more responsive than Doom is. And we all know how much I love Doom, but Doom really needs to be played at 120 or beyond, in my opinion. Now, games like Fallout and slower shooters, like, the, yeah, they're shooters, but they're not really shooters, like action RPG type of games, those are actually perfectly fine at 60 FPS, in my opinion. They're also designed to run at 60 FPS. While you can run them faster, they were built around 60 FPS as the target, and they seem to work well. Much like the Batman Arkham games, they pretty much lock to 60 FPS as well, but at 60, those games are great. However, if I go to 30, uh, as I have them on console as well, these games to me are almost unplayable. It just looks like a slideshow, specifically on the LG OLED, because you can clearly see each individual frame. 30 FPS, it just is not good enough for these type of games for me, but 60 is perfectly fine. Now for you, you're gonna have to test this out and figure out which game types you like to play and figure out what input delay makes the most sense for you, like what feels most comfortable. And then what I recommend doing is once you figure that out, use something like RevaTuner uh, Statistics Server, RTSS, comes with MSI Afterburner, uh, because I can't get the Relive one to work on the AMD drivers. It just doesn't work for me. I know you can use Radeon Chill, and that works sometimes. But for me, RTSS seems to work the best and actually set up frame rate caps. Now you might be asking, well, why do you want frame rate caps? Aha, well, this is kind of one of those hidden secrets out there. Letting your games run unlocked or at unlocked frame rates mean that your system's pouring all the resources at all times. It's basically running completely on tilt till it hits a bottleneck, and then there you go. Typically what this will do is actually hurt your 0.1 and 1% lows because your system's maxed out at all times. So when it hits something extra difficult to crunch on, it's actually going to push those down even further. So for me personally, I cap my entire system at 120 FPS because there's no games that I need more than that. And then on a per game basis, I'll cap either at 60, 90, or 120. Now I have uh, G-Sync and FreeSync on my displays, so 90 FPS works just fine. Gets a nice smooth you know, experience. Now, if you don't have FreeSync or G-Sync, you're gonna wanna stick with 60 or 120 and V-Sync to it, so this way you don't get screen tearing as well. So you actually get a smoother experience overall, making sure you cap your frame rates. Now, for esports players out there, you guys have a whole different set of rules. I'm talking about mostly for single player games where you just want a smooth, clean experience. This is the best way to go. Now, obviously, if you're playing in tournaments and for cash and things like that, or even on Twitch, uh, yeah, you're gonna want the absolute best of the best. So you guys are kind of your own category. But for everybody else, even if you play esports for fun, basically if you don't play for money, don't worry about it. I would still have the frame rate cap. You will just adjust and get used to it. As if you're used to a smooth and consistent experience, you will become more accustomed to it. And for me overall, that's better than having spikes between 200 and 400 frames per second because that will change how things go on the fly. It's more dynamic instead of something that's more static. So that's my recommendation when it comes to frame rate. Figure out what type of games you play and then just cap your frame rates at a certain level. So now you also know when you're looking at a new GPU, will this run this game or this type of game at the frame rates that I want? And then finally is quality settings. And quality settings is probably going to be one of the more divisive ones out there because it's most subjective. Everybody's gonna want something different here. As I explained, for me, resolution is basically 1080p is perfectly fine for me. And 60 to 120 FPS, those are my target goals. I now know those. See, quality settings helps you maintain those goals right there. So for example, on older games, maybe I can run them at max settings or the quality settings that I want and still be able to push 4K on my current GPUs. So I keep mentioning like the Batman games because they just came out on GOG and I'm playing them again. So like Batman Arkham Asylum on an RTX 2060, native 4K, no problem. So I run that at 4K because I'm hitting all the rest of my boxes here. Now, the quality settings that 
I don't like, and I mentioned before, are ones that to me actually degrade image quality. And these are things like bloom. These are things like motion blur, uh, depth of field, chromatic aberration, uh, basically all the pro post-processing effects that modern games toss on. They throw on all sorts of extra junk into the game and it makes the image quality softer, which means less detailed, less defined. And I just, I don't like that personally. Some of you guys might like the depth of field, but don't need the other stuff. You're gonna have to test this out to figure it out, but a lot of you, I doubt, have ever tried this. Now, the best example of this and that I could show you guys is the Resident Evil 2 Remaster, where I'm gonna show you with all of the settings turned on, and then I'm gonna show you with none of the post-processing. I'm gonna turn it all off. And to me, it looks infinitely better without all that crap on. So you're seeing the video footage now, and yeah, so you can see like the, uh, was it the screen space reflections? They just kind of like zoom in and out. They're very grainy. That just looks terrible in this game. A lot of games can do screen space reflections pretty well. This game really doesn't, so get rid of it. And then, like I said, I turned off all post-processing effects other than TAA. So just the TAA is the only post-processed effect going on on this version of the game now. And to me, this is a much cleaner, much better presented image. I can see anywhere, there's no like extra blur added to anything. And if I wanna look at something deep in the distance, I can see it perfectly fine. To me, this is just a better presentation. And this is kind of more the way that games used to be rendered in the Xbox 360 and uh, PS3 era. For example, once again, I'm gonna go back to Batman Arkham Asylum. If you look at this image here, this is recorded at 4K, native 4K. And this, to me, this image is perfectly clean. And by turning off all that modern post-processing effects, you get your games to look more like this. And I prefer this look to my games than the newer stuff. Now, by turning off all these effects, the performance increase is rather substantial. Over time, you know, with all these effects compounding on top of each other, this does have a detrimental effect to your game's image quality. Now, like I said, you may personally like the depth of field giving you that sort of cinematic-ish experience, but to me, in cinema, they use that effect to draw the viewer's attention to a certain item. In gaming, like, this example right here, I'm just using some Outer Worlds footage because this is pretty cut and dry. You can see it very obviously, but you know, they're not trying to draw your attention on anything like specific. It's not part of the storytelling. All it is is, hey, you don't need to see what's going on in the background. Well, what if something interesting is going on in the background? Maybe this dialogue is boring me and I'd rather see what's going on in the background. With depth of field on, you don't have that option. Now, if I'm paying attention to the person with depth of field off, my eyes will naturally blur out the background. That's the way your eyes actually work. So by turning that effect off, you still get the same effect if you're doing the thing that the game wants you to do. And now the same thing could be said about LCDs. LCDs naturally have a lot of motion blur just added in because it's poor monitor technology for things in motion, especially high motion. Now I'm gonna use some footage from Linus's CX 48 inch video. I used it in my LG OLED video where you can clearly see even at 240 Hertz compared to the OLED's 120 Hertz, uh, it, it's a much blurrier image. That's just the nature of the technology. By the way, this is shot with a 3000 FPS camera. So that footage is about as good as you're gonna get. That's why I keep using Linus's footage. He's got the best equipment out there. So motion blur doesn't make any sense, especially on an LCD, because you're gonna get motion blur anyway. Your display is just naturally gonna put it on there. So I always assumed that motion blur was just there to try to like help hide that, but realistically, you can just turn it off, you're still gonna have motion blur. So if you like motion blur and you're using an LCD display, just turn it off and you still have motion blur. Now on an OLED, I just don't see the point. Wouldn't you rather have the nice clean image quality because you're basically, removing the benefit of using OLED by turning motion blur on, which is each frame rendered very clean, very clear, just like you saw on the Linus video footage where, you know, you can see that guy off in the corner in the distance, like on the side, very clearly, and maybe that's the guy you wanna go for next. So you finish doing what you're doing and then you go after this guy. So to me, you're basically eliminating all that money that you're spending on OLED by turning motion blur on. Now, I recommend each and every single one of you go through some games and just try turning off certain settings. So like 
Personally, textures for me, you want those on high or ultra, depending on what resolution you game at. Today, in modern games, if you're running games at 1080p, high and ultra, you're not going to visually see the difference. So you can just drop that to high, and it's going to look basically the same, just due to the fact that there's less resolution there. But that doesn't really hurt your game performance either way. That's more like a VRAM check. As long as you have enough VRAM, you can even crank on Ultra at 1080p. It's Like I said, it's not visually going to make any difference, but it's also not going to hurt your performance. Uh, shadow quality. Personally, I can go all the way down to medium and low in certain games because to me, it just doesn't visually make that big of a difference. But these are certain things that you know you need to check out for yourself. And then when it comes to the post-processing effects, you might find it beneficial to turn most of that off as well. If you prefer the clean look where there's no blur, it's just here's the image and wherever you're looking, you can then focus on. Instead of the game telling you what you should focus on, you yourself use your own eyes and your own eyes will blur out, blur out everything that you don't need to be seeing. That's just the way our eyes work. Whatever we focus on, we see and whatever we don't focus on naturally gets blurred out. So I would recommend if you are one of those people that are like, oh, I just turn on all the settings. I need them all on ultra. Well, start turning some of those off and seeing if you like the image quality better, because then that brings more performance back to your system. And perhaps you'll be like me and you turn all of it off. That saves a crap ton of performance right there. And then maybe you can go with a tier lower GPU than you thought that you needed and get similar performance. Or perhaps you'll find out, okay, maybe you really do like all those effects. Now then, now you know at least at that point that you want all that stuff on. To you, it visually looks better. But then you have to understand, all right, I want all this stuff, and that stuff all looks better at higher resolution, so maybe I do need 4K Ultra. Then you have to recognize that, yeah, you're going to be looking at $1,000 on up for GPUs pretty much for the foreseeable future. And well, I mean, you have to come to terms with that. If that's okay with you and you're like, well, I like all this stuff. I want all this stuff. I can afford that those prices. Well, go for it. You know, that's why like people are getting kind of upset with me. It's like, why are you telling people to buy RTX 3090s? Well, if they have the money and they want the performance at this point in time with RTX uh, 3080s at, you know, a thousand to twelve hundred dollars, might as well just get the 3090 at this point. It's going to hold its value a little bit better because of the VRAM. You might as well. And you can actually get them. Now, I'd argue most of those people probably already did that. They probably already bought one at this point in time. So most of you guys out there either don't have the funds or honestly can live without the 4K Ultra. You can do some sort of compromise settings. And like I said, if you don't like all those post-processing effects like me, try running your games at lower resolutions. You'll notice that the image quality doesn't change that much without all that post-processing. Because like I said, the post-processing effects really need all that extra resolution to basically do their job the best. But if you turn that off, lower resolution is still gonna do pretty well. Especially nowadays with TAA, it cleans up Jaggies very well, even at lower resolutions, which to me, lower resolutions is sub 1080p because Jaggies at 1080p really aren't that bad, and they're nearly non-existent at 4K, even without any anti-aliasing. So I hope this has helped you guys out a little bit out there and maybe help you realign your own expectations. Perhaps you've never really looked into it that much. You just buy the game, you turn everything to the max, and if it doesn't run the way that you want, you get upset or buy a new graphics card. Well, nowadays you can't just go out and buy a new graphics card. That's not an option. Not without paying a handsome premium to somebody over on eBay. And let's be honest, I'm not going to recommend doing that. So really, you probably want to stick with what you have. And if you can get more performance out of what you currently have and get visual quality that you actually feel is superior, definitely go that route from now on. And that will also, like I said, realign your expectations when looking at a new graphics card. Maybe you always bought a 70 class graphics card. After doing this, maybe the 60 class graphics card will make more sense to you hey, that's an extra like $100, $200 that you're not spending anymore. You're welcome. Same thing if you're looking at like the 80 or 90 class GPUs. Maybe you're like, oh, I'm playing 1440p, but I can turn some of these settings off. Maybe nowadays you can go down to a 70 class. See what I'm saying? So for you guys out there, knowing what works best for you 
is going to be beneficial on a lot of fronts and save you a lot of money. So I really hope this does help you out. I'm really interested to hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section below. Have you guys found anything that you're like, oh man, this makes things look a lot better to me by turning this off? Like to me, turning off film grain is one of the big ones. That used to be big like 10 years ago. They put it on all these games. I'm like, turn that crap off. Um, but you know, nowadays there, there's more and more effects that they keep putting in there to try to make games look like movies. Meanwhile, games, the games industry has dwarfed the movie industry. At this point in time, games need to start, stop looking like movies and start looking more like games and movies need to start trying to catch up because they're two different mediums. Like I said, the movie's trying to do storytelling with like depth of field. It wants to like highlight a certain item that m might be foreshadowing something into the future. When you're just talking to somebody in Outer Worlds or Fallout or whatever, who really cares? What's going on in the background might be more important than what this person right in front of you is telling you. So it, it doesn't make sense, like, the way that they do it. I mean, for cinematic shots and stuff, yeah, that type of stuff makes sense. But to me, it doesn't make any sense in a video game, but to each their own on that front. But I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. If you found this video useful, please smash that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. Sharing this video really does help out, gets the word out there. There's a lot of people that overspend on graphics cards, and just by simply testing out uh, a few games and a few settings, they might figure out, hey, I can make do with less. This can save people a lot of money, so I really appreciate that. That's really all I have for you guys here today, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.